Hello and welcome to a new series that I'll be starting up on this channel. Uh, this series is just going to be a Puzzle Pirates poker series. But I'm not sure, sure what I'm going to call it yet. But it's just um, just going to be a series where I, I'll have a bit of gameplay of me playing poker for a various amount of time and I'll cut to various hands which of importance and just try and show like my strategy. I've had varying degrees of success of this, well, the, the strategy that I use. I, I would say that I'm quite... Quite a conservative player, and tr really only try and play when the odds are in my favour. Obviously, that doesn't always work, but yeah, I, I usually end up coming away with a profit in the end. So, I think it's a pretty good um, method to stay by to make to make money. So, how it will go on as long as this series is concerned is, I, I've got about an hour's worth of footage here, and um, I'm just going to cut to different hands. So, so where I made some specific decisions and why that I made them. Um, and things like that so here I'll probably cut ahead now to when the first hand comes up where I had to make some decisions so thankfully it was only I think it was my third or fourth hand here and I thought I got drawn a pocket queens so obviously straight away you're thinking this could be your hand you're in a good good shape obviously the odds are in your favour unfortunately uh, well I suppose it was no K flop really Obviously, I've got the two of the queens that would f fill out the uh, straight, and she bets strong with four thousand. So, I was just because I've just started, I I, assume I went with that because not too fast. Four thousand isn't a lot to me, so I thought I'd keep going because the chances are she hasn't got the straight as of yet, and she might be chasing the flush. Obviously, there on the turn that really did help me. So I thought I'm, pr I'm probably okay. She may have the ten. But then there we go, that's what I was hoping for, so to get the full house, and at this point, I don't really think I'm going to be beaten. And thankfully I was proven right there, and she had also got the full house, but a bit lower than me. So thankfully we won that hand quite nicely, and set me up. So as you can see, it took me a few more hands to get to the next one where I had any chance within the within the round. Obviously, looking at it, it's not the best hand to start with. I always think um, you should, as long as it doesn't get raised, there's no point in folding because you may as well call because you never have any idea what's going to come up. And quite often, when a lot of people are in the pot, um, people have got good hands, so the lesser hands will tend to do better. So as you see, a flop, um, a pair of fives. So again, it's nothing great, but. It gives me in the hand, like there's still, I've got quite a few possible outs that can that definitely improve my hand. I've just got to be aware of this straight here, and I think that might come back to bite me in the end. But at the moment, 400 she bets, and again, that's not enough to put me off. Like, I've still got plenty of time, two more cards to come out, which could improve my hand like significantly. So I'm going to call this here and hope that something good comes up, um, and if it doesn't, like I say, it doesn't really bother me because I've only invested, what, 600 into this hand. So thankfully, that this proves my point why you need to stay in. I get the three of a kind here with the fives. Obviously, I haven't got the highest kicker in the world, but I feel I've probably got the highest hand. Unfortunately, though, then the four gets drawn and there's a, a straight draw out there. And to me, the because people have been staying in, the chances of them the straight being there are pretty high. So... To me, now with the 1,000, I, I, I would fold because, for me, the odds are no longer in my favour. And, and as, as you can see, everyone else is folded. So I assume he had the straight. But I didn't get lose too much money, so it was okay. So as you can see here, I get drawn pocket sevens this time. It's actually got a lot of pockets during this game. Um, not sure why, but um, so yeah, you always think you're in a good good stead here, like to start you off. I don't know why when I play, I'm not a massive fan of these because I I never seem to get drawn the card that I want. But obviously, you've got to stay in, and I would I would call to a reasonable level. As you can see here, got an awful flop with all diamonds. I mean, I've got a diamond. 
but 5.6 and I've got the two sevens, so it's not looking great for me here. But the only thing I can hope really is for the straight flush would, would do me. But I think at this point, uh, 600, it's, it's a bit on the edge, like it's not loads, but I just thought calculated risk, like it wasn't worth it. And thankfully, the turn showed me that. Like, I, I think I'd be well out of the hands by now. And, um, as, as you would, what his betting would suggest is that he had a lot better hand there. So I feel that was the right decision. I didn't lose too much in the in the hand. As for this uh, next hand, I get drawn the uh, jack. <laughs> so that shows you how how often I'm getting the pockets on the uh, pre flop draw. Um, so as you say, with a thousand there, obviously with it being one of our higher pockets in the game, I, there's no reason not to call that. I mean, you're probably currently leading with the best hand. Potentially not, but again, the odds are in your favour, kind of thing. So obviously the, the, you're hoping for some jacks to come up or either something to set up the straight. So I've got a very outside chance of the straight with the 9 and king coming up but I'd need the queen and 10. And again, it's just calculated risk. So again, yes, you could have the king, but you, you can't be sure. And obviously with this 3 coming up, it doesn't really help me a lot. So depending on what he bets will determine what, what I do here. And to me now, 4,000 is just a little too much with how much money I've got there. So on this case, I'm going to fold because I feel one player on the table will either have a king or a three. I'm, I'm not sure if we'll get to find out, but we can see. I think one of them has a three, maybe, or a king. So yeah, as I said, one of them had a three or a king. But in the end, obviously, one of them ended up getting the flush draw. So it's the right decision. So here we're drawing the eights and sevens, and I don't know for what reason particularly. Well, I, I kind of do. Like, I kind of like these hands because obviously it sets you up for the straight. And obviously, it's quite a good hand in poker, and a lot of people at this stage will be betting on lower hands, I mean, lower hands, sorry, higher hands. So with your aces, your kings, things like that. So it just gives you a bit of a chance, and I feel like three thousand. Um, two hundred. Sorry, wasn't wasn't too much. I mean, I had I'd made the money, so that's in a good stead. Get this draw, and um, obviously I've got the highest pairs there, but obviously someone could have the three. So again, just because I'm quite conservative, I didn't call that because I assume one of them will have a three. Or obviously, when people pre-flop raise quite a bit, they've probably got the pockets, and as shown, they both had pockets, the queens and nines. And also he had the three, so you just gotta be wary of what others their betting habits suggest. So on this hand we get drawn the uh, jack and queen here. Again, two cards that run off one another which I quite like. And also this time they're obviously a bit higher so that always helps. But as always it really depends on the flop. But before you, on the pre-flop round, so I'm quite happy with this set of cards that we've got here. So everyone just bets the 200 and it's pretty standard first round here. But as we can see, as the flop comes up, I couldn't really have asked for anything better. Fair enough, I've got to be a bit wary of the uh, flush draw here with the two hearts. But here I'm thinking, yes, I've got the strongest hand really that anyone has unless they've got pockets of any of those cards. So my technique here is, the reason I've checked is because I don't want to try and let them know that I've got a very good hand straight away. I don't want to scare them off kind of thing. So my hope is that someone on this round will now bet so then it doesn't look like me leading it. Unfortunately didn't, so the reason for my 800 bet was to try not to scare them off and keep people in the pot. So I managed to keep 5 in, which I was pretty happy with. And again, I get a quite a nice last card, doesn't really affect me, and I still think I probably won the hand. 
So I try and bet two thousand, hoping that one or two may call and I maybe as make a little bit more money. Unfortunately, I didn't, so no one was really willing to go in. But I still think I managed to make as much money as I could off the people that I was against. Well, I don't know what the odds were, but <laughs> as you can see, we get the draw on the same hand as last time, just with them both being the clubs, which gives me even more possible outs here. So we've got the chance of the flush draw, the straight draw, and obviously we're also looking for the Jackson Queens to come out here. So clearly he's pre-flop raised to 977, but obviously that's not enough to scare me off, so I, I call anyway. And thankfully I get drawn the, the highest pair out there on the flop. So I think I'm in a pretty good set. I've got a good kicker with the Queen. And I feel like I'm probably maybe got the best hand there. Again, the turn helps me a lot, gives me the two pair um, off my cards, and I and I just I just raise it a little. Again, try not to scare him off. I'm just trying to see what he's going to do because I really don't know what he's got at this point because betting's been quite weird. Then the threes come out, so this way I'm also a bit wary because you never know. He may have just had like the pair of threes, so he bets three three. Makes me think I oh, probably hasn't trying to scare me off with that. Thankfully he doesn't, he has a pair of seven, so I'm not really sure why he kept going on. And again, I felt like I did just about as best I could out of that hand there. So this is the final hand of the video unfortunately, as you can probably tell I got dealt a lot of rubbish hands before this and I was just getting a little bit frustrated. Um, as you may find quite often in this series as it goes on maybe, I'm going to advise against what I did here. So as you can see I've typed in already, I'm going all in. I would definitely not advise you do this after like a session you've had because you can just loot everything you've done and all the work you've put in. I mean yeah, maybe for all the time that I put in, 9,000 profit isn't great. But you should still take it and you've made money and not lost any. So I would definitely advise against what I do here. Um, unfortunately I do think I make some money in the end and come away with about 20k profit. But obviously this is all complete luck here now. And as you can see I cash out knowing that this is the end for me. So I think that wraps up the first episode of this series. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed it. And... If you think I could do anything different, anything I did good or bad, please let me know in the comments. But if not, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.